Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night wherever we find you. This is Kale here with Good Ghosting Team. Um, this is a podcast opportunity. We have a special guest today, Mr. Angelo Kala with the Cello Team, and we wanted to take an opportunity to check in with him. He's got some very interesting developments. How are you today, sir? Hi, Kale. Um, nice to be in this podcast. Happy to share about um, the pilots that I'm doing, as well as the pilot that we did in Kenya. Uh, really interested uh, to work with Good Ghosting. I think you guys are into a great product, and I am happy to share what I've heard from the ground, from, from the Kenyans uh, that tried the platform. Right on. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us today. So let's let's move backwards to move forward, right? So let's just start with some light background. How about just who are you and how did you get into crypto? What kind of background do you have in this area? Great. Yeah. So I am working for Cello Foundation. I am part of the research and innovation circle. Uh, in, in my role, I lead global pilots. Our goal at the Cell Foundation is to be a catalyst to develop different use cases uh, of the technology of the blockchain. Um, Cello is a layer one uh, where good ghosting is also building on. Um, and our goal is to develop an ecosystem where the stable coin will be useful, uh, especially um, to, you know, to, to achieve our goal of like um, unleashing or like creating conditions of prosperity for all. Um, this pilot that I did in particular in Kenya aims to develop the micro work use case. Um, we em envision a world where talent globally is unlocked uh, and is able to access opportunities uh, using cryptocurrency. And so we, we envision a world where uh, a lot of people will choose to receive stable coins and cryptocurrency as their salary and compensation for the work that they, uh, that they do. Gotcha. Uh, so I meet pilots globally um, and Kenya is one and I'm excited to share about it. That's awesome right there. It sounds very interesting. So even I had to do a little little prep for this. And so micro work, I don't know that that's a term everyone's perfectly mastered yet. And so how would you define the word micro work? What do we mean when we say that? Sure. So actually the micro work part is, um, is dealt with by the partner that we're working with. They're also part of the Alliance for Prosperity of, of the Cello ecosystem. Uh, but basically uh, think about um, the artificial in the intelligence and machine learning industry globally, which is already like in the tune of like maybe a billion dollars. Um, for these machine learning um, platforms or at least like technologies to operate, they need a lot of data as input in order to train the models uh, that make this function. And my favorite example here, for example, is like the, the, the CAPTCHA uh, that you use when you open your email. Um, and you're supposed to like, let's say, choose, uh, um, click the boxes that have traffic lights or like, um, you know, like a, a bicycle, motorcycle. Exactly. And so for that function, uh, you need image annotation, you need uh, data, data inputs. And so when we talk about micro work, and this includes the micro work that we ask our participants to do, these are like small tasks, small repetitive tasks. Um, that aim to organize and annotate data so that they could be fed to the machine learning uh, tools being developed by, by developers, by companies uh, worldwide. And I think it's, it, it is interesting because um, it's a big opportunity, the data annotation industry. I think the, la the last estimate is that it's about like 450 million US dollars in size. And it's a work opportunity, especially in places where employment opportunities are scarce. And so our goal or our vision is that, okay, um, we want to expand access to this industry, but unfortunately right now the situation is we don't have, or like it requires you to have a laptop um, and a bank account uh, in order for you to do this type of work. And definitely this is like a pain point or like a friction especially for people who would benefit most from this type of work. And that's where, where the solution, our solution comes in. Um, yeah, I, I'm happy to uh, talk about it, but like in a, in a nutshell, uh, Kale, um, Kersali, our pa partner is a machine learning um, company. They expanded or they aim to expand access to artificial intelligence and machine learning work by creating a platform where users or like workers can do image annotation or data data work in general or micro work through their mobile phones 
so they don't need to invest heavily anymore in a laptop and then the partnership with cell foundation uh, and the cell ecosystem in general is also very strategic because um normally they would need a bank account and they would need to wait for a month uh, before they receive their compensation uh, but in our case um right away Corsali is able to remunerate, remunerate them uh, for the small tasks and we're talking about let's say them earning three to five dollars per task completed um, before if they use you know the traditional platforms or perhaps like bank channels um, the fees the transaction fees would erase the value that they earn but now using cryptocurrency using blockchain technology we're able to transfer that small value and um, yeah, this is helpful, especially like for the population that we work with in Kenya. Sometimes three dollars or five dollars per task is the difference between eating a day and not. That's that's amazing, so, Angela. That's amazing. Well, in, in what you're discussing is almost not even just the unbanked. You're talking about individuals who, even if they used the banking channels available, it would it would practically negate their their efforts. Exactly, exactly. And we're talking about capable individuals. Huh? Like uh, I saw a lot of talent in Kenya. And the tasks, I would say, at least like the microwork industry is wide ranging, right? Like there are complex tasks that would perhaps require higher level of education or like higher level of training. But there are also small repetitive tasks um, that can be done by anyone, basically. And so we we thought that um, investing in this solution or like investing in this partnership um, would unlock that global talent, as I was talking about uh, earlier that, earlier on. That makes perfect sense. It's ambitious, and, and and you are attacking something that has been in a silo for a long time, which is the data load of the world. There's more data out there than there is being utilized, and and creating mm -hmm. a you know mobilizing a, a labor force to. To, to process that is, is just uh, cherry picking. That's low hanging fruit, practically. Correct, correct. Um, and the other thing there is, you know, um, I think the consciousness, the global consciousness about uh, data sourcing of like where we are getting data, uh, which data is being used to develop the tools that will, you know, determine our future um, is slowly, you know, being talked about, right? And uh, our thing about this solution, or our, our vision, is not just only providing access to those who need it the most, but also making sure that you know a, a lot of people are able to participate in like the development of artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, products and tools uh, that will definitely shape how we live in the near future. Hmm, that is very impressive. How long has this effort been alive? Yeah, so um, it has been a series of pilots. Um, the earliest prototype that we did was in 2019. Uh, we just wanted to check whether the very first prototype of Kursali, actually the name before was Stoke, but, um, worked. And then we wanted to establish that this is something that, uh, you know, that, that can be demanded uh, or like there is a demand for this or workers would be interested to do this type of work. Um, and then after that, uh, we had another partnership uh, with a big humanitarian organization uh, earlier this year uh, to kind of scale it up uh, to 200 individuals, as well as like test the off-ramp or like the payment rail. Because before uh, it was a workaround, but now we have a local partner in Kenya in particular that allows the people to convert their cryptocurrency, their cello US dollars, uh, to Kenyan shillings or the local currency. Um, and so this partnership now with the World Food Program, um, and they were very generous in supporting us to do a third pilot, um, uh, like an installment of the series. Um, our goal now is to further kind of like stretch the scaling proposition um, as well as, and I think this is where good ghosting would come in, um, test the solution. Like I, we know that workers can do this and there's a demand for workers um, or from workers to do this type of work. But our consciousness also is like uh, them holding cryptocurrency actually opens the doors um, to the world of decentralized finance for, for our participants. And so we started inviting different members of the ecosystem uh, to introduce their products and, uh, you know, like um, introduce our participants, the users, to kind of like new products and services, financial products and services that otherwise they would not have uh, access to. And now now you're speaking right to my decentralized heart. And that is mm -hmm. the, the, the power of what we're involved with is, is this is truly a global platform. 
and it, it mm-hmm. presents itself in many formats. And this, I'm ha, even with the first pilot. Have you guys seen a pretty, um, pretty well reception to it? Have there been those pretty, pretty um, large success stories with individuals seeing the the large scale vision of what we're discussing? Yes, I would say so. Um, maybe at the baseline, of course, uh, the income is very essential to them because a lot of them. At least the statistics that we gathered uh, when we were about to start the third pilot is that 80% of our participants are unemployed. And I think uh, the, the COVID pandemic made those things complicated, even if they had, you know, college degrees or advanced degrees. Um, there's just like scarce uh, work opportunity in the country um, right now. Sure. So definitely like in terms of um, giving them access to income, I think we're checking the boxes there. Um, but also at the same time, I think there's just a lot of excitement and uh, most of our participants are young people, um, maybe ranging from maybe 20 to let's say 30, 35 years old. And they have heard of cryptocurrency before, sometimes because of a scam, unfortunately. Sure. Uh, but then they've not had the opportunity to hold it or, you know, like we know the state of the industry right now, uh, it also requires you to have a lot of, um, you know, I would say privilege. Uh, points of access uh, for you to actually hold it and so them being able to participate here I think kind of like hits two birds with one stone uh, absolutely well, and, and almost have a source almost speaks yeah, exactly yes. to the true to the true goal here right is, is you're exactly correct is is it you know crypto can easily be mis- misinterpreted as an elitist type industry uh, of multi hundreds of thousands of dollar pictures you know and, and just people just waiting on Lambos and, yeah. and, and it's just a total misrepresentation of the real p- power of this potential. Exactly, exactly. And we do have those stories. Um, I think um, we heard from some participants uh, that, you know, like they're terrified of crypto because um, they heard from friends who have invested or like channeled some of their savings to some coin. Let's say I don't know the coin anymore, uh, but then turned out to be a scam. Sure. And, you know, like sometimes, especially because uh, maybe it's part of the decentralized nature of, of the technology, uh, but being able to tell which is a legitimate source of information versus uh, which is a, which is a legitimate, uh, you know, form of, let's say, investment or a way of like using your money, holding value, uh, sometimes it's difficult for them. And so in a way, the pilot was also helpful because uh, we've kind of like formed a learning community, not just for them to learn about um, digital microwork and upskill themselves for another source of income, but also like have a space where we can collectively understand what is cryptocurrency and how it can help them, you know, create value and like improve their lives. It, it all starts with crypto literacy. <laughs> correct, correct. And that I- education, I would say, um, is still a priority for Cello Foundation and it's a consistent theme at least in all the pilots that I've done. Um, I think people in general are open to innovation uh, but of course like sometimes it's the I, I would say number one the information how it is communicated like how complex it is for them to understand that yes uh, cryptocurrency is value or like uh, as they hold cryptocurrency is useful for them. Um, but then at the same time, like something like, uh, you know, we won't run away with their money. Right. Uh, like we're not holding their money, but then like uh, the money that they have is valuable and that they won't lose them. Sometimes that, that trust uh, and that confidence will always emanate from like a good base of, of education. That makes perfect sense. Do you see, it's something I've experienced myself just being in, in, in crypto heavily for the last year. Are there any challenges with language? Are there any challenges with being able to, to have well, well-interpreted well materials for these individuals? Yeah, um, I would say I was lucky, or we were lucky in Kenya because uh, English is widely used and everyone is particularly fluent in English. Um, and so, well, the majority of like the materials that we have are uh, is in the English language, which is, uh, which is great. Um, but I do think, I think you're right, because uh, let's say when I was talking to them, presenting to them the technology as well as like the opportunity for good ghosting, uh, it was in English, right? And I don't speak the local language, which is um, Swahili. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but ultimately, um, you know, and this is an, another part of like education. I think when we talk about education, it's not just like the the lecture type, you know, or like watching a video, but also like some sort of like group learning or like collective learning. I noticed um, people starting to, or like, you know, group of friends starting to talk about it, teaching them, clarifying things. Um, and that's because I, I, I don't understand Sohiri, but I'm sure like that's the process by which trust was built sure. or like, you know, doubts were, were erased or like were corrected. I have seen um, imagery, and I'm jealous, and I'm waiting for the United States to catch up. I have seen imagery out of China of, of spending evenings turning mall venues into DeFi laboratories for people to just come and study DeFi and, and, and build on their literacy. And, and so you're absolutely correct. It starts with education. Education leads to understanding. Understanding leads to utilization. Yeah, yeah, and I agree with that. Like More of like learning by doing. Um, I've done pilots before where we invested hev heavily on like creating a video, for example, or a pamphlet or a poster, like some printed materials. Um, and they were useful uh, to a certain extent. Um, but I think nothing beats a friend, a family member, a trusted, you know, a trusted pal teaching you how to do it, guiding you through it, uh, instead of it being like, you know, just you following instructions like number one, number two, number three. Absolutely. Um, because I guess at the end of the day, crypto is for, like we envision crypto to be used daily, to be something that's that's relevant to their daily lives. And so like if it's not accessible, then it doesn't work. Absolutely. Well, and, and if, if we do not take the effort to onboard new users, then we get trapped in our own silos. And so it does get um, frustrating sometimes when mom's asking that same question for the millionth time about what's a wallet, but take take that extra step, take the effort and make sure that you're, you're onboarding people in a proper way because otherwise you're right, they're gonna have a bad experience and that leads to a bad opinion and then and then they're out. Yeah, and, and, and the, the word spreads, right? Like they talk to each other and sometimes like it's the, it's a recommendation that kind of like convinces convinces one person like oh he tried it it worked nothing bad happened to him so yeah we need, we need the success up. stories as much as much as the horror stories exactly so so for the scale of your project the scope of the project what do you guys see as the next stage right so uh from my point of view, uh, in the Cello Foundation, um, we continue to kind of like invest in this use case, but I would focus on two things. Uh, the first one is we continue to have discussions with other um, work providers, micro work platform, or in fact, actually other platforms that enable you to do digital work. Um, and we have a lot, right? I think the COVID pandemic also unleashed, you know, a battalion of online gig workers. So this might be translation work, etc. And um, our vision is, of course, convince these platforms um, to kind of like explore or integrate um, cryptocurrency uh, as a technology, as a payment rail, uh, because we know that uh, it will enable them to reach uh, more talent. Um, at the same time, I think, uh, especially in this pilot, um, one thing that we really focused on is really, aside from like, of course, making sure that the payment rail is functioning, I think a functioning payment rail, meaning them receiving their currency and then being able to convert it, let's say, to fiat, uh, is essential is in building trust and it is essential in like making sure that um, workers feel that they're being fairly compensated. But the second priority that we have is to strengthen the connection uh, of these platforms or like to introduce these workers, introduce their confidence, uh, you know, reinforce their confidence in DeFi. Uh, decentralized finance. That's why we're bringing different members of the communities, especially uh, those focused on DeFi products, um, uh, to reach out uh, to these workers um, so that they have more options uh, in terms of their use uh, of the crypto um, so that it's not always just about converting it to fiat. Of course, they should and they could, uh, especially if they need to. But then, like having more, uh, you know, products for savings, perhaps products for credit for those who want to venture in businesses or have bigger need for liquidity. So these connections uh, are our priority uh, as we move along with like the use case and what we want to do next. Um, 
is is to have really this ecosystem where people prefer receiving Cello, uh, CUSD or CEURO as their compensation, and then staying within the ecosystem and like taking advantage of all these opportunities for for DeFi to further create value. That that is well identified. It's something that we're seeing similar to almost uh, with El Salvador rolling out the the Bitcoin infrastructure that they want to introduce to everyone. Is Kenya lacking right now in a in a crypto payment infrastructure for real world goods and services? Does that bridge not exist yet? Um, so we have a local partner in Kenya that allows them to uh, what they call this to convert from CUSD to Kenyan shillings to Mpesa, and Kenya is known globally, uh, particularly for a very strong digital um, money system called Mpesa. And our partner, Kutani Pay, enables them to do that. Um, but yeah, we continue to like uh, engage with other DeFi developers, DeFi apps, um, or even like traditional finance applications who are starting to dabble into, into crypto. Uh, let's say lending platforms, savings platforms like Good Ghosting. Um, to kind of like uh, recognize that, yeah, these workers uh, want crypto or like to think of or are are willing to accept crypto as their payment. Um, and then we need to provide these services to them. Um, we're still in that early stage, in that development stage, but definitely I'm bullish that uh, that will be in the near future. That sounds great. It, it, it makes perfect sense. The use case, uh, just it's 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 a great deployment of, of crypto technology, and it's happy to see you guys finding success with it. Right, right. Okay, Angelo, yeah. do you have any anything that you'd like to share with us blatantly about the, the kind of an open format here? I've kind of led you through the whole way, and I'd like to just kind of turn the floor over to you and let you have a platform here. Yeah, um, I think our participants and uh, our participants really enjoy the experience of uh, good coding. And like, I, I remember two quotes in particular uh, that kind of like captures uh, the innovation as well as like the idea why uh, this type of like product is a good fit for them. Of course, I also had like some worries uh, at the start, like, oh, will they even, you know, uh, will this be even appetizing to them? Will they even try it? Um, one person said, uh, and she's a photographer who dabbled into digital microwork to have like um, uh, a complementary source of income. Uh, but she said, like, it's fun. Like, um, hmm. good posting as a savings platform, you know, two parts, right? Like, savings in itself uh, is a particularly tedious activity. Like, you know, it's important. Uh, but then like you being able to save is difficult and so um, what do you call this having a challenge or like a format like good ghosting uh, increased you know uh, you know it's appeal basically and definitely made it uh, um, you know encouraging to save and so like it's no longer she was saying like it's no longer boarding it's more of like yes yeah, so when do i deposit next or when do i put my uh crypto or like what other pools i can get and so like that fun part and uh i have to i have to um also note that say for good ghosting that uh, you assign like these like cool cute trendy avatars uh <laughs> definitely feel like uh they're you know like in an ecosystem like an online uh, online world where savings is fun. Absolutely, it's a um, part. It's something, something from the future for sure. Correct. Um, it's also interesting um, uh, where, of course, like uh, uh, that format, uh, and then of course, like uh, savings being rewarding uh, because the savings platform that they know, um, you know, the traditional bank products would only give them like you know pennies or like very small amount um, in in return from in return of like what they invested so this one is like them being able to realize higher value from savings kind of like incentivizes them to do that and i think um, I, I gotta i gotta mention just right there angela that is that is an amazing comparison point because that is similar for us even here and so from kenya to the states to france to south america regardless the banking systems are not offering enough incentive to motivate these individuals to to be uh, enthusiastic about participating yeah yeah uh, absolutely um, and then at the same time the enthusiasm interacts or like you know your attitude towards savings in general interacts with the fact that you know there's a lot of 
of uh, temptations. You know, um, the second thing that I wanted to share was someone was commenting um, because you know in Kenya in particular. Um, the digital money ecosystem is very robust, right? Like even the seller on the street would ex- accept M-Pesa as like a form of payment. If you want to buy like a piece of fruit or like pay your, your uh, you know, mot- motorcycle, like the informal transportation um, providers, you can do so using M-Pesa. And so uh, there's this interesting tidbit where they shared like, yeah, with that type of digital money, it's so integrated that when I see something that I want to buy, I just buy it right away because it's in my Impesa. Huh. But at least with good ghosting or with crypto, there's some sort of like accountability, right? Like you can't just withdraw it right away. You really have to be very um, careful when to withdraw it. And at the same time, like there's an incentive for you to complete the the, ro- the rules of the game, uh, and so that kind of like reinforces the behavior of like, oh, do I really like this stuff, or can I postpone that for another day, maybe when I have received my reward? You know, after, that's after. That, that's a great point too, right? Is that on off ramp process might be just enough of a of a of a of a delay gap to to make you think twice before you spend that 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 value. Whereas having exactly. that having it in your pocket, it's almost just too easy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And so, in a way, I also see that as a paradox. Uh, I haven't fully wrapped my head around it. <laughs> um, but then, like, on and off ramps are essential to build trust in crypto, right? Because we want to kind of, like, send the message that, uh, you know, crypto is real money. And, you know, uh, at the end of the day, it's the user who decides which form uh, he or she prefers in terms of, like, holding, holding value. Um, but then at the same time, like that that barrier of like, oh, we need off ramps, kind of like meets the other goal or like helps our users think more about like, okay, uh, how do I use crypto or like, um, you know, like it's it's better to save in crypto because uh, these barriers, I I won't call it even as barriers, but more of like they're converting to some sort of like um, accountability posts, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. Like, uh, to encourage them to, to kind of like really commit uh, to savings. It, so it, it has I, this is similar effect on myself as well. I tend to use the on ramp, and I don't often visit the off ramp. It tends to kind of be a one way route, and and you know I'm I'm just I see the value of of my DeFi portfolio. I recognize it. I acknowledge it, and so I'm happy to just hold it and build on exactly. it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, and then some other thoughts that I heard from participants. Um, it's more of like it unlocks their imagination uh, on like what's possible with crypto. Mm. Uh, and so like some of them started to ask or uh, ask about, oh, okay, are there other forms of savings uh, that they can do, or like um, how can they convert their M-Pesa, which is like the the digital currency in Kenya, uh, to crypto. Um, and these are the things, of course, that we continue to work on uh, in the ecosystem, just making sure that the connections are smooth um, and that, you know, our vision at the end of the day is like to offer different products that suit their needs. But I think uh, we kind of started with something where, um, you know, definitely there's interest in savings, but their previous experience with savings in general is just not the best. And us introducing this type of like scheme uh, this type of uh, you know arrangement kind of made it you know fun uh, and exciting, but still very rewarding. Well, and and that's exactly it, right? Crypto tingles the mind and shows the possibilities because these. I mean, you're you're possibly setting the stage for the next generation of GitHub contributors. You know, because at, at Correct. one point in time, they'll have the recognition that that someone built this thing, didn't they? Like someone did this, and maybe I could do something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I'd, I'd like to go back to the idea of like, um, you know, when I was talking with them or like we were introducing crypto um, and, and you mentioned this a while ago, right? Like your the, the idea of decentralization of like, what is it, uh, what do they stand to gain uh, with decentralization or like a decentralized future? And I feel that a lot of them has a lot to contribute uh, but then us introducing or like welcoming them to the community rather than as you were saying as well, uh, it being elitist, it being like, oh, it's just for someone who graduated with a computer science degree 
or it's someone who's just like into finance or has a lot of like I don't know inheritance from their parents who can participate versus them right something like yeah it's useful for them as well but uh, we just need those points of access uh, to make it also you know accessible and beneficial for them absolutely but but never before I do believe ha- has there been such an opportunity to connect you know with with resources with talent correct correct yeah um, and also, you know, like, um, of course, even on the micro work part, uh, we continue to like refine the platform. Um, our, our partner, Corsali, continues to also kind of like define their space uh, in the industry. Uh, but we know like there's, there's talent, right? Um, but then, uh, unfortunately, like a lot of this talent uh, is kind of like sidelined uh, just because of like frictions that could have easily been, been addressed. Hmm. No, and that makes exact sense then. What would you see as the largest obstacle currently that, that you see in front of, of your organization current, like in terms of moving forward? What are the largest challenges in the space right now? Right. Um, in particular, I would say uh, two things. Um, so for micro work, I feel like, um, you know, as, as I've said, like the consciousness is growing, but I think there's a long way to go. Um, the artificial in- intelligence industry and machine learning industry at large um, is still is heavily unregulated. Um, not particularly like I like about regulation, but it's more of like um, you know, the, there's a lot of development, but in terms of like making sure that the data annotators are paid sufficiently and fairly, I think we have a long way to go. Uh, and so, like increasing that consciousness about um, sourcing of data and making sure that uh, workers who participate in the, as they call it, the data supply chain, uh, get their fair share, um, is definitely like a priority as we move forward with the industry. Uh, and Corsali, our partner, continues to work on that. And WFP uh, is an ally or a supporter in making sure that that happens. Um, so that's one thing, and I think there's a lot of conversations, both at the policy level as well as like at the level of developers, in making sure that we're, uh, you know, like we're making it the norm. Uh, we're avoiding it from being a sweatshop, right? Like yeah. us extracting people, and then if in artificial intelligence kind of like will will shape the future, then it's been determined by, you know, like uh, not everyone um, on an exclusionary basis. Sure. Um, for, for cryptocurrency, uh, I think I would say from my point of view as you know a project manager that implemented a lot of pilots, um, crypto education will still be essential. I mean, will still be will still need to be the priority for anyone or for any project that really wants um, you know wide scale adoption. Um, and I say that it, it sounds very, you know, intuitive, but in fact, uh, you'll be surprised that um, we're kind of like, um, you know, it's implied, but then like, I think there's more effort that can be done um, in terms of like refining, making sure um, that, you know, people are fully aware of, of the benefits as well as the risks uh, of, of being of being in the space and of course there are risks and we want to make sure that uh, people are able to decide freely uh, and with like good information um, so that they can take advantage because at the end of the day we want them to be able to create and uh, share value so so yeah I, I guess like um, we're still at that stage of like experimenting what's the sweet spot on education um, in terms of like we don't I, 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 my personal take is like we don't have to explain all the complexity of like blockchain, you know, like uh, the, the geeky stuff that the engineers are working. But it's very important to kind of like deliver the point that this is trustworthy, uh, that this holds value, uh, and that this is legitimate. This is something that they can that they can use in order to, to you know, in, to improve their lives or like to to enhance uh, their well being. Uh, I, I, I think I think kind of like uh, that's a work in progress and we, we have to continue on investing um, in that front. But it sounds like your priorities are right on the money, Angelo. You're a true evangelist uh, and, and we as a 
as a crypto user, we are greatly appreciative to, to the pioneers like yourselves getting out there and doing the groundwork to make sure that more people are understanding and utilizing this every day. Right, right. And yeah, and there's, there's still a lot of space to innovate and like experiment. Um, as I've seen in the Kenya pilots, there's a demand for like new forms of savings, uh, new forms of credit. Uh, there's a lot of like business ideas I heard from the participants like, oh, only if given the opportunity, uh, they would set up their own shop or like pursue a, a passion, a talent to, to earn, something like that. Um, but there's just so much friction in the, in the financial world right now as it is. And I believe this is like an opportunity for DeFi, right? Uh, for, for the tech to come in and kind of like uh, lead the way. Uh, self-issued collateral debt positions are uh, just a, a magical a magical thing right right yeah right on Angela well I know that you're a busy man and I appreciate the time that you've given us here I want to just take a moment if you haven't used good ghost yet at all out there you've heard Angela here talking about it so we gamify DeFi we, we end boring savings and we make it fun for people um, these are social savings pools that have challenges. You have to hit certain deposits on certain frequencies, uh, different parameters for different pools. We oftentimes have interesting partners or sponsorships, so we can offer extra incentives of sorts and make it um, just a little bit sweeter for your time. But we use the power of the pool and DeFi to grow on those deposited assets. You have to complete that pool to be a part of that extra incentive. And if you miss that deposit, then you have turned into a ghost and the rest of the participants are going to have the benefit of your good ghosting. And so it just incentivizes dedicated DeFi habits and responsibility. Um, it's a really great intro platform for individuals that are unfamiliar with crypto because it is typically single-sided assets. And that becomes a whole different discussion when you get a little more advanced into liquidity providing, but that's for another time. Uh, and so we do still have two pools available right now for entry, the CELO pools for the CUSD and also for the CELO. Those are still open and available through the 20th of December. So if you haven't uh, been aware of those, just pay attention. That's still an opportunity for you to get involved with good ghosting early. Um, we're going good places and so just pay attention because we're going to try to bring you along the way. There's really exciting developments. Angelo, once again, just thank you for your time and thank you for being with us today. Thanks, uh, and we really enjoyed partnering with Good Ghosting in this project, and and I'm happy that we could uh, share the mission, you know, of like introducing more people to the to the benefits and the possibilities of uh, DeFi. Well, and I obviously can't commit the whole team to the whole everything, but just on my ambitious part, I would love to see more participation and more pilot work that you guys do, and in any way that we can integrate. Um, it just sounds like such a, a such a positive mission. It's 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 work well done. Yeah, definitely. And thank you. And we're we're excited to you know like um, my own invitation is like um, if you haven't heard about Cello, uh, explore Cello. Uh, we support a lot of builders, um, dreamers, doers uh, <laughs> who want to like uh, you know create new possibilities, especially like uh, you know uh, making the world more more inclusive financially and. Uh, otherwise. Well, and a lightweight, accessible blockchain is something that has a place in this world. So, well done, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thanks everyone for hanging out. Um, expect more of these in the future. I like doing these styles. You really are able to get great information from these guests and, and just recognize the expertise that they have to offer. Um, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you guys around.